Welcome back to Mel's Board Game Room, and I am doing my January 2024 Top 9 Games that I played during the month of January. So before I get into that, I'd like to bring up my sponsors, which is Games and Couples from Ashbat Online Counseling. And they do couple counseling, utilizing a lot of board game as a tool in their counseling session uh, and as exercise for couples to uh, come together and spend some quality times together. So be sure to check them out. I'll have their link uh, down below. So in the month of January, I have played 51 times, and that was 40 different games. So I did pretty good. It was a, a nice, good, steady month for board game playing I think 4% uh, of my base collection ended up getting played um, we're a little late filming it here today is the 27th of February so it's almost time to do our top 9 of February um, I had put this list together kind of forgot about it then I recorded it the other day and I recorded and I was talking away doing such a great job just to find out that the recording had stopped so <laughs> Here we are again. So let's get started with number nine. In my number nine position for all the games I played during the month of January is Red Rising. So Red Rising is a Stonemaier game, so you know the components are amazing. Um, and this is a game that kind of takes from Fantasy Realm and take that mechanism and kind of creates a game, kind of a different game from it. So the main port is like Fantasy Realm where you have cards in your hand and you're trying to create combination of cards that's going to give you the best score. But there's also different tracks that you're going to be activating as you're placing cards down depending on where you put them and the cards that you pick up. Um, and you're trying to get like the most out of that. So the most gems, the most influence on the one area and kind of go up the one track. Um, it is a really neat interesting game. Um, components as I mentioned are amazing. These ones all have like the metallic cube. Keep in mind gold and yellow looks almost exactly the same however. Um, but we quite enjoy this one. You gotta go into it knowing that it's like you'll have some cards like okay if you have this one and this other card you score an extra 30 points. That other card may not come up and if you're able to kind of put some of those cards together and the other players don't like there is a bit of a luck element to it for sure. But we quite enjoy this play of it, so that's why it's my number nine position. Then in number eight uh, is a new game that I recently acquired and finally played, and that is Brew. So Brew is a dice worker placement with area control kind of element to it. Um, first of all, it is beautiful. The dice are nice earthy colors. Uh, the artwork is just stunning. Um, and you have this main board that you can place your dice on and it's double sided so you'll play one side on the one, uh, first round on the one side then you flip it over and then you go back. Um, you also have these different area cards that comes out and they'll have different terrain. Sometimes it's all the same, sometimes it'll be a variation. And that is also kind of part of the worker placement area where you can place your dice. And depending on the symbol on your dice and where it goes on there, what you're activating, uh, you can bring in some creatures with you and you can have up to three um, depending on your character and then you can also kind of set them free into the elements and if you have like the card with the uh, terrain that they like then you get bonus points for for doing that then you're collecting different resources so that you can convert that into potions and co collecting those potions that you can also uh, spend to activate this one time ability it was really interesting it was fun to play I quite enjoy this one uh, quite a bit I think Lee just uh, won this one by quite a bit. He had so many potions, um, but it was a great game and it looked really nice. Then in number seven position, I have Seven Wonders Architect. Uh, the first time I recorded this video, I was surprised that my number seven was Seven Wonders. It wasn't by design. That's just luck of the draw here. So 
With this version of Seven Wonders, it's probably the one that I think is the quickest to play, the easiest to teach, and the easiest to get to the table. Each player will uh, pick one of the wonder they want to do, and you put kind of all of the tiles of this wonder that you want to build on their construction side. Then on your turn, you draw a card, either from your right, from your left, or from the middle. And then the cards from your right is kind of shared with the player on that side. The card on your left is shared with the player on that side and those are face up so you see what is available there or you can draw from the middle but those ones are face down unless you have the cat then you can have a peek before you decide um, and you're trying to get different resources so the resources can be spent to build your wonder as you can see the next one here needs two of the same resources the next one will be three different resources then three same resources and so on um, you can also uh, acquire some science and then trade in the science to have the science token that will give you special abilities or end of game scoring uh, you'll have military card and military cards uh, will give you well, military strength but then if there's a horn symbol on it you'll flip one of the peace token onto the you know the war side and if there is no more peace tokens in the middle we go to war then you compare your military strength to those of the people on either side of you if you win those battles you get the military token that's going to give you extra points the game ends when one of the players has built their entire wonder and then you tally up the points that you've accumulated super f quick super fun it is just so satisfying to play then in number six position is Terra Nova Terra Nova is like Terra Mystica's baby sister um, it is almost exactly the same game it plays very similar the gameplay is almost the same you don't have the track that you have in Terra Mystica in fact Terra Nova is kind of a simplified version so if this is a game that you've been wanting to play but it's just been too daunting or you've been wanting to teach other players and you just didn't think it'd be you thought it'd be a little too much this is a great way to get them into this game's um, mechanics um, so it's has a strong Catan feel to my uh, to me as I see a lot of Catanish element in that is just taking it to the next level and made like even better if that's even possible um, what's really interesting is each character is or each player is gonna have a character that needs a certain type of terrain and if you want to spread out but the terrain around you is not the type of terrain that you can then you need to terraform it and depending on how similar or dissimilar that a they are how much you have to terraform if it's going to cost you one shovel or if it's going to cost you two shovel and then you change that terrain and you can build on and what's really interesting as well is on your play board you have all of the buildings on there and as you build you take the building off your board and onto the map and as you do that things gets revealed so on the income phase more resources are available to you and then as you upgrade you're going to put some of those buildings back onto your board covering those things again but then putting the bigger building out so it's just kind of changing what is being revealed as well um, the really interesting part as well is the magic tokens or the power tokens I believe they call it and you have three dish kind of printed on the board you have the one the number two and the number three and when you upgrade your magic or your power you always have to take from the location one into location two once location one is completely empty you can go from location two and put it in the third dish and once you have power tokens in the third dish those can be used to activate special abilities and you want to make sure that you've kind of upgraded as much as you can before you start spending because then if you upgrade afterwards and you've spent some well now they're in dish number one and you need to kind of start the process all over again uh... this game is really fun so satisfying i really enjoy it um, i really enjoy terra mystica so but this one was really easy to teach to other players uh... so that's the good point of it so that was my number six terra nova then in number five position is a game that I played at the Acme Legion board game day. We're doing that once a month now. And my friend brought Marvel Champion the card game. So I hadn't played this one before. It has a legendary kind of feel to it. Um, it's a... Is it deck building? I don't know if it's a deck building because your deck is kind of already built. Um, but I believe you might be able to add more. I'm not sure if it's deck building, but you got your deck that you're playing and then... 
Um, but what's really interesting is you play as a different character. I ended up playing as uh, Captain America. Now, you have the option, if you want, to turn your character over to Steve Rogers so that you're less inconspicuous and you can heal a little bit more while you're in that uh, persona. And then I could go and hang out in my... Uh, apartment to to heal some more and different things. Um, one of the character that was my another player was playing was uh, Ant Man, and what's really cool is he could get into his big, uh, and then the car would fall open. So he had like this big uh, card to show that he's the big Ant Man, and he could do special abilities that way as well. And we're all battling against the bad guys who are trying to complete two schemes. So we're trying to thwart those or attack them. Um, really neat, very interesting. I quite enjoy my play of that, and that's why it's in my number five position, Marvel's Champions, the card game. Then in number four position is Pandemic Hot Zone North America. This is Pandemic. It plays exactly like Pandemic, except it's a little bit more condensed. There's only three... Um, disease that are going around. Your map is a lot tighter and you're traveling around from location to location trying to connect with the other players so that you can swap out cards so that you have four of the same color so that you can trade them in for the cure um, just like regular pandemic. But then at the end of each turn you flip over some of the location cards that will be infected. If you ever get more than three uh, disease on one location, then it creates an outbreak and that just spreads out more disease. Um, so in order to win, you need to cure or find all three cures. To lose, if you run out of cards in your main card area, you lose the game. If you get too many outbreaks, you lose the game. Or if you um, run out of a certain disease cubes, you have lose the game, which is how I lost the game when I played it. We ran out of blue disease. Um, but it was so satisfying. I really love this game. I'm a big Pandemic fan. I have a lot of the different version. This one is just so neat and compact and easy to get to the table, so it was so completely satisfying. And that's why it was my number four, Pandemic Hot Zone North America. Then in number three position, I have Nations, the dice game. So this is a dice worker placement civilization theme game. And it is just so good. Um, so as you start with your different character in the bottom, you'll have different kind of locations that'll show how many dice you start with and then you're going to roll those dice depending on what's rolled on there you can trade um, gold to purchase new tiles if that's what they require uh, you can roll rocks to build your wonders uh, you'll be getting spears for military you'll be getting food to feed your people um, and so on and you have a goal each round like for military and for food and then if you don't meet them you don't get the points um, but then as you spend your gold you can go and acquire new tiles to cover the tiles that you had so then you would take away the dice that you covered up but then you get the new dice that you've revealed if there are dice on there and you get to roll them and use them right away this is just such a really neat dice chucking game it is so satisfying and you have like some tokens or ability that allow you to re-roll um, you'll get some permanent uh, resources that you can spend every time it's just so great I quite enjoy this one I've played this one a few times now and because I liked it so much I also got nations the board game which I have not tried yet but I am looking forward to that and that was my number three nations the dice game in number two position is one that I hadn't played in a little while but this is like one of those modern classic this is a game that I like to introduce uh, to people who want to get into the hobby because it is just so good and that is Champions of Midgard so this is another dice chucking game because um, you it's a worker placement as well you have your meeple and you will go and activate different location some of them will give you warrior dice that you will add to your board and then you can send these warriors to go and attack the trolls or attack the monsters or attack the bigger monsters across the sea and then when you're in battle, uh, the monsters will require so many hit points, but they also hit back. So you roll your dice depending on how many hits you get. That's how much damage you get. If it's enough to defeat the monster, great. You've defeated the monster. If not, then you can assign that many hits to them and then see how many they hit back. So if those dice are destroyed, they've 
been killed. And then with if you have any remaining dice, you can keep rolling, trying to complete that battle and defeat the monster. It is so satisfying. I so I must like battle and dice. So this one just works so great. And that is my number two champions of Midgard. And then in number one position for the games played during the month of January is Wayfarers of the South Tigris. I bought this one a little bit before Christmas. So I finally got it played. Um, and it was really interesting. So it's another one that is a worker placement and dice placement as well. So you have the dice, you roll the dice. Depending on what is on the dice, what you can activate. Um, you'll have the board on your main board that you can kind of add tiles so that the dice can activate different things. And then you can place those dice on different locations to get different actions or resources but then you can also send your workers across the different areas around the board to get different cards to be able to add on to your main board as well and then you have this big track along the middle of the board and you start on one end and depending on what you complete in the game if you've acquired two cards of this type then you can go down this path or if you've accumulated this much then you can go down this path and as you get there now you get new options that you can branch from so it kind of works towards what you're trying to accomplish so that you can move forward on this path and then as you move forward it'll unlock different things different abilities and uh, I think you get more dice as you go as well and then the game ends when one player reaches the end of that middle path it was so neat so interesting um, I really quite enjoy this one. It definitely has a bit of a higher complexity uh, compared to some of the other games that made my list uh, this month, but it was very neat. And here is a recap of all nine games that made uh, the top nine games for the month of January. Uh, be sure to tune in to see what's going to make my list for February. So be sure, be sure to follow me on Facebook. My Facebook page is Mal's Board Game Room, as well as Instagram, Mel's underscore board game underscore room. I also have a podcast that I do with my friend Carla called The Board Game Specialist and my YouTube channel, Mel's Board Game Room. Bye, everybody.